Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the top five triggers of a fearful avoidant attachment style, and we'll talk a little bit about why these things trigger them. So if you're new to this channel, I create daily breakthrough videos for you to learn the powerful subconscious tools that you need to change your life and your relationships, specifically at the subconscious level, because this is where real change occurs. So let's talk about it. Trigger number one for the fearful avoidant attachment style individual by far and away is feeling like trust is broken. So anytime there's a form of distrust, be it something big or small, because these things can obviously exist along a continuum, this tends to be a major trigger for FAs in general. These can be things like lack of transparency around something can be a big trigger, incongruency. So what you say and what you like what you say you're going to do and what you actually do just don't line up. So you're like, yeah, I'll be there at seven. And then you're always there at like nine. But that, that discrepancy between the two is always what creates this. Like you say one thing, but you do another. And, and that's a form of violating trust. So that can be a big one. But then obviously we have like larger form betrayals in general, things like cheating, things like texting, um, somebody inappropriately, which can, you know, depending on what your definition of cheating is, can line up with that as well. Um, things like lying, um, stealing, obviously anytime that there's some big form of trust being broken, this is huge. And this is because one of the core wounds for fearful avoidance is, um, I am betrayed and they usually grow up in some kind of, you know, realm or like space with, fa with family or parents or caregivers, where there's like a lot of like incongruency in general, a lot of, you know, confusion, a lot of, one day, one thing is a certain way. Another day, it's something totally different. And, and they don't learn that attachment strategy. They don't feel like, okay, there's some kind of predictability here that I can learn to rely on and be open to and, and feel safe around. And so um, they basically learn, okay, I can't really trust people around me. And they're always like on guard waiting for the other shoe to drop for that trust to be broken. And it really cuts deep when there are previous wounds that we have in our lives as individuals. Number two is feeling controlled or out of control. The core wounds associated with this are I am trapped, I am helpless, I am powerless. This tends to be huge for fearful avoidance because usually similar to what we just talked about around trust being broken, there's a lack of feeling like really safe in your environment, your upbringing, or perhaps if you became fearful avoidant after a really long-term relationship of like 20 years where you were with somebody and, and you know they were perhaps narcissistic or borderline or something like that, um, it can really create these dynamics of feeling profoundly out of control. And so whenever there is this sense of being out of control um, because of the things you're exposed to or the situations that you're in, this becomes a huge imprint on the subconscious mind. And all of a sudden, if you're full avoidant is in a dynamic where they're constantly fearing somebody else taking their control in their adult lives. And this can be a really painful dynamic in a child's upbringing because it can feel like, and, and by the way, like feeling out of control isn't just like having a, a cluster B partner or family member um, who may be narcissistic or borderline. It, this can also be something like um, just being in a family where there's a tremendous amount of fighting, a tremendous amount of volatility, a lot of, um, you know, somebody struggling with addiction, um, somebody, you know, going through war at a young age and, and experiencing being in a really unsafe and scary environment. Like there can be all these different dynamics, but wherever there are these control wounds, usually this adult grows up and goes, I never want anyone else to be able to take control away from me again. I never want to feel unsafe or helpless again. So I'm going to go out of my way my whole life to be hyper independent, take care of myself, have control over how I sleep, how I make my schedule, how I eat, how I everything. And usually a lot of these things, though they can be beneficial in some ways to like want to have control over your own life and take responsibility for it. Sometimes there can be a lot of this rooted in fear and, you know, not wanting to be unsafe again. And it can be an over control or a rigidity that develops. So that is another big one. Number three, people having expectations of them. This is usually because fearful avoidance sort of hand in hand with that control factor can sometimes put too much pressure on themselves, can be a little bit, a little bit perfectionistic. 
And so when, when somebody else has expectations of you, when you already have such extreme expectations of yourself, it really triggers a shadow wound and it can trigger this idea that like, oh, that person's putting pressure on me when I already put so much pressure on myself. And I can feel like, oh no, one extra added thing of pressure. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like this really intense pressured feeling. And so this tends to be triggering and it can also then touch other core wounds, like feeling helpless or out of control. So that's another really big trigger. Number four, this is a huge one for fearful avoidance, taken advantage of. This idea that you're taking advantage of or your boundaries are violated. Why? Usually because fearful avoidance are in a fairly pervasive pattern of taking advantage of themselves to please others, violating their own boundaries to gain favor with others, or to seem like they're doing a good job. And a lot of that comes from, again, just fear of being, you know, unworthy, not good enough, um, unsafe, getting punished for doing something wrong, being bad, like all. So, so if you're ever overextend themselves in many ways, and then when people do that to them, it's like, you know, it's like this big shadow piece because it's like, you're already doing that to yourself so much. It becomes excruciating if somebody mirrors that back to you. And again, this is important stuff to be working on and breaking through. And if you are a fearful avoidant and you want to do deep breakthrough work on this stuff, we have a seven day free trial out right now based on where you think you have the most work to do. I highly recommend starting with the emotional mastery and belief reprogramming course. It's a really deep course for reprogramming these patterns at the belief level and having really powerful tools to do so. But I would also recommend checking out the shadow work course and, um, the boundaries course. These are going to be really important points of growth for fearful avoidance. And the more we show up and heal ourselves, literally, the better we are going to feel in our relationships around us, and the more likely we are to have thriving relationships that are lasting and exciting and, and maintain their passion and connection and all these different things. Number five, last but not least, feeling unworthy, unimportant, or like you don't matter. Again, these are big core wounds. I am unworthy can be a big one for fearful avoidance. They can feel a lot of shame around the unworthy core wound. And whenever somebody makes them feel this way by not acknowledging them, by dismissing them, by not um, sort of allowing them to feel like seen and heard and like they matter and like they're worthy, this can really hurt a fearful avoidant. And it's sort of rooted in, in different forms of emotional neglect. Fearful avoidance may have in childhood because there was other chaos going on in the home um, and things like that. So if you want to do a deeper dive, you want to reprogram a lot of this stuff, there's a link in the description box below. You can check out the seven day free trial. Um, if you want a follow-up video to this, you have more questions, let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.